and I'm your host today for Right. And today I'm going to interview author Joel Rusa and his book All Worlds Awakening. It's a fantastic book. And it's published by White Cat Publications, but honestly, you can get it available on Amazon and it's well worth the read. Well worth the read. How are you doing this morning, Joel? I'm doing pretty darn good. How about you? I'm doing well too, actually. Yeah. All right. Look, we left off last week with a battle raging between Kegelith and Twill. Describe that confrontation, if you will. <laughs> it's funny. It's 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 literally a war of words. They don't get in, and, and they don't get and slap each other or anything like that. It's like they 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 are trying to manipulate each other's reality. They they rename each other. He's trying to force her into a chaos mode. She's trying to force him into a like a normal human mode. And she has more luck than he does because being she's a at least a former goddess of order. <laughs> him trying to deorder her is hard. But since he has no focus, her ordering him is a little easier. But um, so it's really a war of words, and I, I avoided going into much detail because uh, I could go on for pages with them, like you know, flinging concepts and equations at each other. Right. I, I don't know how interesting it would be. It seems more interesting in retrospect than in actuality. Although if I if I come up with a good idea someday, I might do it as a as a short bit in something how the battle actually went possibly. So I don't know. Well, it sounds pretty I, interesting. The like Battle it. of Words sounds interesting. Yeah, literally. Yeah, literally a war of words. All right. What obstacle did Hokan uh, face when approaching the throne? And what did he do to break the stalemate? Another question is, and what happened to him as a result of this? Yeah. Well, try, try, when, when, he, when he figured out where the object he was after was it's, you know, in the throne, he's going after the, the waves of power. He had were like physical almost. He had to, he had to force his way through them. And then as he got near the throne, he was bl blasted by heat and fire. Luckily, his his you know personal energy shield, which I established early in the story, right. was protecting him from the damage until he got to the throne. And then he just lifted up his 40 kilogram war hammer and, and smashed the throne. It was like a black glass throne, basically. Right. And when he did that, he was able to gr grab the node in it, which was Kegelis' main source of power. At that point, he lost, Kegel lost his power, right? Right, or at least a large portion of it. But the resulting blast also basically welded the, you know, welded Helcon's armor, what was left of his armor, to his body. And then he had the node in his hand. Like, and as long as, since he basically claimed the node, Kegel no longer has access to it. Now, what but happened it, to Twill as a result of this? Well, um, no, nothing specifically happened to Twill at this point. It's just that she was winning the battle. Now that Kegelith hadn't had didn't have the note as a power source, she was winning the battle. Like she was. Oh, you know, right. Yeah. Right. So she rose up when as soon as uh, uh, Hokan got the node. Right. She 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 at one point she ran and uh, essentially kicked Kegelith in the nuts, as I recall. It was, <laughs> it was just it was just hard to avoid, I suppose. Someone, <laughs> thought, some, someone thought I was being really mean to Kegelith. I go, well, after all, he's put her through. I mean, you know. <laughs> Yep, he deserved it, right? That's what I figured. But, now, uh, as a result of this, uh, their side, Hokan and Twill's side, ultimately won the battle. Right. What did he say to Kegelith after that? That was well, so he, funny. Well, he he berated him because is that he Hokan had been going through the castle and looking for the node, and as he the further he got, the more indistinct the castle got. And he had to think, wait a minute, if this is all new, he wouldn't be hiding the node back here. If I was him, I'd keep it close by. Because, right. Well, there's only one place he could possibly keep it in the throne. If he if he's not if he didn't eat it or something like that, be in the throne. <laughs> so he he braided him for like you know for God of chaos, you're awfully predictable. <laughs> I was like, this world. It's I thought that was it. a funny line, right? Like it was like, geez, yeah. yeah. But what were Kegelith and Twill's retort to that saying? Well. Uh, well, they, when they were talking about, you know, well, them wanting the node back, um, Kegelith was worried that um, once Twill had the node again, she'd enforce her rules over everybody and everything would be boring and uniform and totally predictable. Right. And, and she says, well, better than you being in charge and not knowing if gravity is going to be holding for one day to the next. Right. Or if the plate... The plant you ate for lunch explodes in your mouth at supper, you know, that sort of thing. 
it, it's like his idea of what's you know it's fun <laughs> It's like his idea of chaos is just enforced randomness. Right. And, uh, it, you know, so nothing is predictable. Nothing's boring. My personal thing is nothing, nothing is ever predictable. Then it's kind of like boring by default. It's like, oh, what wonderful chaos thing are we being forced through today? Oh, yippee. And right. the thing is, if you keep enforcing chaos, how long before you start repeating yourself, I wonder? I mean, if you're enforcing randomness, how much is it actually random, first of all? And well, how many changes can you put yeah. through? So I wonder. I wonder yeah. how many there are, right? Yeah. Now, um, let's see. Twill, you haven't given her his retort. Tw Twill's retort yet. Yeah, that was that was his thing. Is that she was um, that she, that her um, it, it, you know, my rules are better than your enforced randomness. I think that's the one. I think that's what you're thinking. It's like right, right. Yeah, right. All right. Um, what strange outcome for Hokan as a result of the this victory did he have? Uh, well, what did he ultimately do with the node. Yeah. Well, the the first thing is his armor being welded to his body, which can't be good in any way, shape, or form. Yet. Yeah, I wonder uh, about that. Yeah, I, I he'd be in great pain, except I think he's beyond feeling pain at this moment. Like I don't think he has any nerve endings left, but. He has the node, so he decides to use it so that neither one of them have it. And Twill's like, well, you know, I really don't care if I have it as long as Kegelith doesn't have it. Right. And so then Hook goes, well, I'll just take it off this world because he's afraid if he stays there, he'll end up fighting Twill at some point. You know, because, ah, so, because someone wants the point of having those, you always want your viewpoint in force. That's the point, the problem with being godlike beings it's like you always want your point of view to, to rule so maybe well, we never really went into detail but she may have gotten overboard with rules in the old days and in the same way maybe Kegleth went way overboard with the chaos thing right so Hokan doesn't want to ever fight her so he decides to take the work node off the world and uh, he does that by summoning the rainbow bridge which he finally remembers how to <sighs> Well, he was given he was given the rainbow bridge, the Brefoss shard, when he became a knight. But he got so really? drunk last night he couldn't remember how to activate it. Now his mind is clear. So <laughs> he, now, uh, did his armor unweld from his body as a result of having control of the node? Well, no, that that's later. Um, he when he when he comes after he takes node and comes back later, they the uh, full stars the Valdurians peeled all that off and. Um, Maybe he might have used the power of the node too, but you know they at least helped get the armor free from his body. So ah. he's, he doesn't have like you'd say chainmail well as his crotch anymore or something. Yes. Like that, which well, the be, Valdurians took care of it, right? Right. They they tend to do that. They, they're great at the cleanup. They 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 don't allow themselves to interfere directly in too much outworld stuff. Right. Their main thing is preventing dimensional incursions and whatnot from world to world. In this case, um, since Hokan puts himself back in their care, they can help him pretty much any way they choose to. And, right. and they, so he's pretty much normal, as normal as Hokan ever gets. Anyway. But what do you do with the node? Yeah, that um, that the Valdurians kept. It does show up in, in uh, later on in the book. Well, the Valdurians uh, kept the node, huh? They kept the node. Okay. They, um, they are they are using it. Um, because uh, in large part, well, a lot of reasons, it, it's a source of power that uh, kind of requires them becoming gods, and that's actually against their their, their rules. Long, long story, but um, I don't think I mentioned it in the book, but some of the top Valdurians are actually proto-deities. That is to say, they're close to gods, but they have made it, they made it so they can never become gods. Reason being for this is, generally speaking, gods require... Uh, worship and belief from other people to, you know, pump their power and keep it going. Right. Then you've got to worry about maintaining your worshipers and expanding your worshiper base. Yada, Sounds yada. like a hassle when you put it that way. It really, it really kind of is. It's like, are you saying, why would you want to be this way? I mean, of course, you get to have ultimate power within a very limited, you know, space, you know, because right. of other gods. But I mean, there's that. But then you got to fight other gods. And, you know, it's like, it, it, you, you've got a, your worshippers fight theirs. Maybe you help your worshippers fight theirs and on and on like that. Then there's rules like 
the gods like, well, okay, we won't interfere directly. We'll just inspire our worshipers and you know feed them clerical magic or something like that. Yes. And it's eh, and on and on and on. It's like every everything has rules. And the Veldrains <laughs> have their own rules. <laughs> so, now yeah. what was the happy conclusion to this whole business, whole affair? Well, the battle between well, Kegeleth and Twill and Hokan. Yeah. yeah well, node. What was the happy conclusion? Well, Twill's fine now. Kegeleth's off, you know, being probably miserable. But um, so maybe not so happy for Kegeleth. But when Hokan comes back, he's whole, he's clean, he doesn't have the node, he's not vying for power. So they get to actually be uh, a couple now, Ho Hokan and Twill. It was developing throughout the story. But um, it's like finally, well, when, when when he first met her, she was like a five year old kid. It looked like, and then as she's getting older and older, um, as her, her power grew, <laughs> and then Twill mentioned because he said that you know he thought she was extremely beautiful, and well worth meeting. Why didn't you say this before? You were five when I met you. And, and, and you were like a teenager. It's like how, it, that just makes me uncomfortable, basically. You know? <laughs> well, now you're an adult. So you know, not that she was really, she was always like hundreds of thousands of years old anyway, but you know, yep. it's like, eesh. yeah, you're a kid now. Oh, good Lord. You know, that's, that's, yep. yeah, yeah, not someplace he wants to go. And certainly not someplace I want to take the book into. <laughs> but um, the, the funny thing I thought was one of the final lines was um, um, it, earlier on in the book, uh, Raylani Valdurian, the, the lady of Valoran, told him, oh, God, get a girlfriend, because he was, he was, um, he was, he was naked, and, she, and Raylani was there, and she's very enticing, and he's like, oh, good Lord, she goes, you need to get a girlfriend, so then later at the very end thing, it's like, and well, relate to Twill, well, Raylani did say I need to get a girlfriend, and Twill goes, well, orders are orders, <laughs> and boom, there you go. Now, so again, who's Raylani? Yeah. Who was now, Raylani, she, okay, there's there's three main Valdorians. As, there's Indra Valdorian and his wife, Raylani, right. and their son, Caroline. So basically, Indra and Raylani run the Valdorians. The, calling it the Valdorian family almost makes it sound like a mob. A, a mob or, you know. Yep. But, it um, does. Yeah, but the, you know, the, Valdorian, the Valdorian family is here. We want our cut of the action. You know, <laughs> but she, she tries to keep everything running properly, making sure everyone's doing what they're supposed to be doing and, you know, working for the greater good and, you know, whatever else of Elder oh, has boy. to do. Yeah. It's like, that's her thing. And she, she, she regularly visits the oracles to find out what things they, they know they have to take care of that kind of thing there. And, uh, his, I, I almost kind of gave the hint that she might've been one of the oracles at one point, uh, because like the oracles go, oh, we miss you around here. <laughs> it's like, now that's uh, a good question. Describe, yeah. if you will, the oracles, the women she was talking to. Okay, there's eight oracles of Valoran. They have a bunch of titles, but um, one, one is the Ogdode of Omniscience, because I found out Ogdode was a group of eight. Oh, I like that. I got to use it. The Valdorans have this weird thing about the number eight. It's not right. so weird. They're, they're, they're symbols on eight-pointed golden star, So, and each, each of the points has a uh, meaning to it, which, again, I haven't really covered in the books, but so they have this fascination with the number eight <laughs> and it shows up in a lot and <laughs> and uh, so but but there's eight oracles and they all have different means of oracling uh one uses cards one uses like uh tea leaves reading um w water wind that you know electricity yeah. yeah one of them um that was a critty uses dice right because so each of the oracles has a different method of foretelling the future? Yeah, yeah. And okay. um, there, neither is any more accurate than the other, but it's just that it, it's like, Critter, you're up now, roll some dice. Okay, natural 20, go. No, it's like, um, it, but and, and they'll they'll play, you know, they'll do tarot or one, one will do tarot or play card games of some sort. And whatever the results of are, they know something's coming up. Now, it's curious. I'm curious, how does Raylani run the organization, the oracles, in other words? Firmly but fairly. It's like she flits about um, talking to any of the number, various numbers of her family or sometimes the knights that work for them. Usually the knights are contacted more indirectly. Uh, Hokan right. has the cup that glows and 
he has to pour he pours out liquid and it forms liquid letters that he can read and it tells really? him his mission yeah mm -hmm. most of the knights have some kind of weird way of getting in touch with them um but Raylani tries to make sure things are running smoothly she is um she is the rune weaver she 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 is like trying to weave the tapestry of the all worlds into a fat into a pattern that the rune oh, weaver did you say but a, a rune rune weaver. Any, rune weaver yeah yep. um she she is the weaver and the singer you know she will she will sing songs and weave runes and try to get the fabric of the multiverse flowing in a positive direction yeah i know the multiverse not not they don't concentrate in one world god forbid no you know it's like right. well, let's let's try to fix everything eh, i can i can imagine that's difficult but that's right. what why the oracles are very helpful because they predict things before they happen. So does Raylani weave things into existence? She she does actually do that. Yes, uh, okay. she, she can bring things into existence. Um, basically, you know, creating energy into matter or or vice versa. That's the sort of thing she does. And her songs, I, I, at least, it puts the multiverse in a good mood. Probably anyway, if nothing else. <laughs> yep, yep. But her, All right. Who is uh? Is it pronounced Sailoron? Pardon? Who's the the, the person pronounced Sailoron? I think it was her son, right? Oh, Caroline. Sorry. Caroline. 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 That's how it's like, pronounced, right? Should have been. It should have been obvious, but I like. Yeah, Caroline. Yeah, Caroline, Caroline is is their third son. He's um, a boy, other, right? What's that? He's a boy. He's a boy, or yeah. girl actually. He he's a he's a He's a form phaser. He can be pretty much anything he wants to at any given moment. He's not okay. a shapeshifter. He's a form What's phaser. What's the difference between a form uh -huh. shifter and a shapeshifter? Funny you should ask that. Uh, a shapeshifter, basically you manipulate your own your own body mass or whatever into, you become a dragon or something like that. You suck in magic and you feel just a new form. Oh, 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 oh. Yeah. Uh, or, or you become a mouse or whatever. That's, that's shapeshifting. A form phaser, he, be, he instantly becomes whatever he would have been in a different reality. Like let's say there's a reality where Caroline is a green mushroom guy. He becomes that. It's not that he turns, he forms his body into a mushroom man. He becomes that Caroline from whatever reality, you know, if they, they would exist, there's if or, or a crystal man or a something right. like that, or, or an energy man or any, any of those sort of things. Maybe he's made of, you know, metal, anything like that. So it's not the same as shape shifting. How does he know which form he's adopting? Uh, it, it, it's, a, it's totally a matter of will. He, he, it, it's not. It's not random. In his ah, so, right. Now, yeah. why was Indra sore at him? Well, it's just that Indra was always the head of the family and still is, but Caroline is actually more powerful and more competent. Oh. And, and so there's a little bit of a um, little bit of friction there. Sometimes it's like. You young whippersnapper, I've been doing this since before you were born, and you know, I like, kind of it's like, it's like, how dare you? It's like, now can Indra phase form? Um, in, no, in, Indra Indra shape changes. So that's, he's, but no, there's only a limit. He's either a a ball of energy, or a like a seven foot tall bald humanoid. Right. Sometimes he's half hair if he wants to, but um. Is like he 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 could do others if he wanted to, but that's basically his go-to form. Okay, okay. I guess you say his natural forms. So he spends most of his time as a ball of energy. Although if he's meeting people, like when he met the Hokan for the first time, he he appeared as a a giant eight-pointed star of light. Yeah, that was on purpose. Okay. So it's like you wow. know, I can do it. Why not? You know. All so, right. What was in the wind that uh, Critty foresaw? Ah, see that that was that was kind of a joke. Uh, uh, Brilani said, "Well, what's in the wind, Critty? I don't do wind. You know that. They, oh, you, oh, you, okay, okay, I get it. You, you know, it's like it's just a phrase, yeah. So, right. Okay. Critty rolls dice, so it's like, oh, yeah, okay. Um, <laughs> but what, what did she foresee that was disturbing her? That is okay. This is in reference to the word of world of Gestalt, worldless, excuse me, of Gestalt, which comes up in the next story. Uh, really? There's a thing going on they have to deal with, and." That that's her thing. That's, that's how they plan out. the The oracles are very key to the Veldrians planning out anything. So, right. um, well, you need to be here. Someone needs to be here and do such and such. You know. Wow. And so, and then then Relani, they leave it to Relani to plan things because she's good at it and likes to do it. 
Yeah. Right. And who was selected with the gentle probing <laughs> provided <laughs> Val during the introduction to the world in trouble? Who was yeah. that person that was selected? That's Florinald Val during. He shows up in the next story. Uh, How'd you pronounce it again? Of, what's that? How'd you pronounce it again? Fl Florinald. Florinald. L O R I N A L D. Okay. Florinald, yes. Yeah, he's he's the I don't necessarily know the main character in the next story, but he's the Valdurian in the next story. Right. Uh, there's a there's a girl we meet called Kalila, and she is technically the main character, I would say, of the story. So, but uh, Florinald is one of the few Valdurians that I give a lot of screen time to as himself uh, because he's one of the weaker ones. And right. Uh, because most Valdurians are like, you know, and something happens and is taken care of. He right. can't do that. He can shoot things with arrows really good, but <laughs> you know, he can't manipulate reality or anything like that. And uh, so, but how do, but he's how do you get to be one of the weaker Valdurians. Well, he's adopted. Ah. Well, there's a long story behind that, but um, <laughs> but they they look and there's a reason why they adopt people outside the family because it's hard to adopt people inside the family, I suppose, but. Um, they they are they have adopted a number of people. Well, for instance, the guy uh, Ifix who gave Hope got his equipment is adopted. <clears throat> his, he brings um, the ability to like weave spells into objects to create magical objects. Or okay. Items. Okay. Um, and there are others. There are a number. So of they're adopted, adopted based on their abilities. Yeah. Or 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 just because the Veldrians like him for some particular reason. Florinald wasn't brought in because of of his to be okay to be okay I'll, I'll i'll reveal this part florinald was brought in as a valdurian because he suggested that they make valoran their their home dimension before right. that they were just scattered all over everywhere and he says why don't you guys make a place where you can all hang out and they're like you know that's a pretty darn good idea yep. so so they um they uh Said okay, I mean it's like just that alone. It, this is how whimsical the Valdorians can be. Something okay, you want to be adopted and like um okay sure <laughs> you know, but, and right, that's, not, that's how I, I don't think I say that in the book actually, but um the so Valor Valoran itself hasn't been around all that long. But, that's okay. what I was going to ask next. How long has Valoran been around? Yeah, I'm, I can't give the maybe a couple hundred years. It's probably about as old, just slightly younger than Ho uh, than Florinald is, but it oh, hasn't been okay. around the entire. The okay. Entire, Link to the Valdurian, so <laughs> yeah. yeah. All right. Well, that ends our interview today. And tune in next week when we'll have more exciting details of All Worlds Awakening with author Joel Russa. He's author of All Worlds Awakening. You really got to get this book because I it's can't really wait to see great. It. All right. Great. All right. See you later, Joel. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye bye.